Good morning and welcome home worshipers to this second Sunday in Lent. Let us give our thanks to our Lord and Savior and let us praise our Creator for God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Let us pray. Father God, we offer our thanks for your presence with us on this, this Sabbath day. We ask that you uh, make sure that we always remember that by your love which has made us and your love that has kept us, we humbly ask that you forgive us for all we have been. Help us, Father God, to amend what we are and guide us to what you have called each and every one of us to be. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Old Testament book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Just one verse today. Listen as I read from our Old Testament. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, a man had terrifying bedtime hallucinations for a number of weeks and even into months. He told a friend that hideous creatures would come out from under his bed. He said, each night, shortly after I got into bed, out they came to scare the bejeebies out of me. He went on to say, but my brother has solved the problem. His friend said, uh, oh, your brother is a psychiatrist? No, no, he replied. He's a carpenter. He saw the legs off my bed. That's a solution, I suppose. As I read in Proverbs 1-7, it teaches us that the fear of God, let me say it again, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. It doesn't say the love of God is the beginning of, love, of wisdom. No, it does not. I think John Newton uh, hit the nail right on the head in the second verse of, of his hymn, Amazing Grace. "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved." Basil King in his book, The Conquest of Fear, points out that fear causes more misery than all of our sicknesses combined. He says we're not sick all the time, but many people are fearful of something or someone all of the time. Reasonable or normal fear is a good thing. It's a protective thing. In fact, I think it's a gift from God. Otherwise, when we're visiting the zoo, we might be tempted to jump over the fence to, to pet a grizzly bear. Fear holds us back. Most people might drive much faster than they do if they didn't fear the person with the flashing blue lights. Every April, our honesty gets a, an assist from our fear of an IRS audit. By the way, I'm told there's a new simpler tax form coming in 2023. It has two parts. Part A asks, how much money do you make? Part B says, please send it in. According to a recent public opinion poll, 40% of Americans feel fear public speaking, pretty much what I'm doing right now. 36% fear of heights, 34% fear being closed into very small spaces. Other fears include the fear of darkness, the fear of flying, and I'm guilty on this one, the fear of snakes. I read about a public school teacher who was retiring far too early. When asked why she was re retiring, she replied one word, that word is fear. She went on to say that she, most of the time, was afraid of her principal. Her principal, she said, was, I think, pretty sure that he was afraid of his superintendent. The superintendent was afraid of the school board. Hmm. The school board was afraid of the parents. Fear is, is a vital thing for one's survival. I would think that fear is vital for the survival of our country. And more importantly, it is vital for our salvation. I'm convinced that the greatest problem we face in these United States today is the loss of one specific fear, and that is the fear of God. I say that because this fear is the glue that holds our society, our Christian community together. It's the safety net that keeps a nation from falling into moral decay. I think we've lost, for the most part, the fear of God, and we're losing it more each and every day. Someone once said, I fear God, and next to God, I fear the person who fears God not. The fear of God is one fear we need to have, one we need to hold on to. If we're going to deal with all the other fears, 
and find God's best for us in our life, we must have a healthy fear of Him. Allow me to share three things we can do that will help us foster this much needed fear. The first thing we can do is understand this fear. The very words, fear of God, conjure up a negative image. You might ask, why do I need to fear God? But it shouldn't. It should not you know, call forth that image because it's a different kind of fear. I'm not talking about the fear that a young boy feels towards a schoolyard bully, nor am I talking about the type of fear that a superstitious person has about the number 13. I'm talking about the fear derived from the awe and respect we are to have for our God. So with that thought, let me give you what I think the fear of God is. It's the awareness that when you're in the presence of a holy, just, and almighty God, and that every thought we have, every word we say, and every action we take is on display for that God. Now, if that doesn't put the fear of God in you, I just don't know what will. If we are continuously aware that all of our thoughts, all of our words, and all of our actions are on display for others to see, hmm, would it make a difference in the way you live your life? In fact, I think too many people worry a great deal about what other people think of them. This is the fear of others. If we have this kind of fear of others, how much more should we fear our God? Believing in God, trusting in God, having faith in God shouldn't conjure up a negative image. Oh no. So we shouldn't fear, see the fear of God as being negative either. Let me ask three questions. Do you need God's direction in making the daily decisions you must make? Psalm 25, 12 answers this question, telling us, Who are those that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way they should choose. Question two, do you want protection from your enemies? Psalm 34, 7 answers this question, telling us, The angel of the Lord stays close around those who fear him, and he takes them out of trouble. And question number three, do you want to stay away from temptation and have victory over sin? Proverbs 16, 6 answers this question, telling us this, the fear of the Lord keeps one away from sin. In fact, the fear of God can add quality to our lives. Proverbs 10, 27 says, the fear of the Lord adds length to life but the years of the wicked are cut short. The second thing we can do to foster the fear of God is to come to know God through His Word. We can't have a relationship with God unless we truly know Him. When we get into God's Word and begin to hear what God says, the fear of God will begin to grow in our hearts. It is then that we learn the truth as written in Psalm 25, 14. The Lord confides in those who fear Him. He makes His covenant known to them. What this means is that the true knowledge of God always begins with a deep reverence for and fear of Him. To boil the fear of God down to its true essence means we are to take God seriously and put Him in our lives exactly where He belongs. What's important for our salvation is the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the fear of God. Pastor A.W. Tozer, noted, a noted Christian thinker, says that no one can know the true grace of God who has not first known the fear of God. The psalmist in 85.9 says this, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. When we don't fear God, two things aren't where they should be in our lives. Those two things are us, and God. The fear of God is something that we first learn, then it is something we choose to believe. Proverbs 1, 29 says that many people hate knowledge and choose not to fear the Lord. We can choose to fear God, which means to choose to love God so much that God and God alone is the supreme love of our life. That we love him more than ourselves and more than anyone else. The fear of God and the love of God are very closely linked, folks. There are certain things that just go together. Things that just aren't supposed to be separated, like bacon and eggs, macaroni and cheese, 
peanut butter and jelly. Another is the love and the fear of God. Psalm 38, 18 says this, But the Lord watches over those who fear him and those who rely on his steadfast love. Psalm 118.4 says this, Let those who fear the Lord say his love endures forever. This tells us that there is nothing that will cause us to love God more than a proper fear of God. Having the fear of God will bring us contentment and satisfaction and leave us wanting for nothing. I say this because I firmly believe that when God is in his proper place in our lives, we have put nothing else before him. God will satisfy our every need because God is all we need. When we understand who God is, then we will come to understand why a healthy fear of God is necessary for a relationship with him. And who is God? God is someone who doesn't like our sin. God is someone who sent his son to die for our sin. Proverbs 2 verse 1 says this, My child, listen to me and treasure my instructions. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. Well, the third thing we can do to foster this fear of God is to express that fear. In the book of Acts is a Roman soldier named Cornelius. Do you know what the community said about him? Acts 10, 22 tells us, Cornelius is a just man, a man who fears God. That fear was apparent in the way that Cornelius lived his life. People could see the fear of God in him. Would people call you a God-fearing person? There's nothing between those who fear God and those who don't. People's fear of God can be seen in the way they live, in their spiritual walk. It leads to a life of holiness. When you fear God, it means you fear displeasing Him. I'll say it again, displeasing Him. After Moses received the Ten Commandments, he stood before the people of Israel. Exodus 20, verse 2 says, He told them, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Interesting comments, I think, from Moses. Do not be afraid, but fear God. How can fear keep us from being afraid? As I said earlier, when we understand that we don't have to fear anything else but God, and when we realize that God, the God that we fear, is the God that loves us more than anyone else can, then our love for Him will cast out every other fear. In addition, the fear of God will affect our witnessing. When we fear God as his disciples, we want others to fear God as well. Because to know God is to love God, and to love God is to be saved. But it all begins with the fear of God. Solomon has been called the wisest man who ever lived. He was once the richest, most powerful man in the world. He was David's heir to Israel's throne the builder of God's temple, and a man unbelievably blessed by God. Solomon wrote more than 1,000 of our Proverbs. Kings traveled from everywhere to learn from him. Solomon spent a large part of his life getting away from the fear of God. The result, it cost him dearly. When Moses looked back at his life, he wrote in Ecclesiastes, here is my final conclusion, fear God and obey his commands. For this is the duty of every person. In closing, at the depth of the 1930s depression in America, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said this, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Sir, I respectfully disagree. When we fear God, we have nothing left to fear, not even fear itself. Amen.